<laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to the writer's class. Yes, I got to say the writer's class. You didn't have to rush it, anything. You didn't have to be me one because Winona's not here today. Oh, wait, I'm Jade. I forgot to say that. So I'm Jade, right? But Winona's not here today, so I can just, like, talk about whatever I want to. I don't even know what I'm going to get into today. Like, I don't even know what the banter is going to be because it's just so nice to have silence. Let's just take a moment and enjoy it, y'all. Just joking. I miss Winona so much. All right. So um, I'm bad with banter by myself. So as you know, we wrote Literary Life Guides with pop poetry. Yes, some people like to call them anthologies. We don't call us a boy. Literary Life Guides, the pop poetry. And I thought the words was bad with other life lessons. And I thought being grown up was easy. If only I were me, a memoir and verse. Boring Coffee and the Widow's Web series available where you get your audio books. Or you can check out all the other books, and especially one of my favorite books. I know we're not supposed to have favorites, but I have them anyway with the series, and I thought I did my journey alone. You can check out all of that, everything that your ladies are doing on www.andithoughtladies.com. But y'all aren't here to hear about me go on and on about how gorgeous and wonderful it is to not have to base anyone. You're here to hear from our wonderful guests. Wonderful guests, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, my name is RS Twells. Um, I am author of The Field Agent, The Agent Bennett Saga. The first book is already out. Um, I am an afternoon tea drinker and I spend whatever spare moment I have uh, spending time at the barn with my horse, Maple. Wow. The barn. Okay. So first we have to talk about this horse, Maple. Like I wanted to talk about other things. I was like, yes, the book series. No horse, Maple it is. Sorry. Just dropped it. <laughs> yeah, you just dropped that right. I was like, okay. So how long have you had Maple? Did you grow up being a question? Yeah, 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 yeah. So I started writing when I was 12. Uh, it was very classic, like, oh, okay, I'll muck out your stall if you let me ride your horse type thing, because uh, horses are expensive. Um, and then I think five years ago now, I was training horses and uh, I got my hands on this horse that someone wanted to sell and they just wanted me to put some miles on it. And as I was riding her to train her up to sell, I'm like, oh, I love her. So I bought her and now she is the love of my life, my child. And um, she is in a field full of cows. And whenever a cow gives birth, she like is super protective of the new baby cow. It's really funny. She's so cute. That is so amazing. Like y'all seriously buy her books just for that. But let's talk about your series. And first I have to talk about your series a little bit and then how you started writing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so yeah, sorry, you want me to talk about my series first? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, um, so the field agent follows Bennett. Um, he's a 16 year old and he has a twin brother named Colin and they're taken as babies by this organization called the Orphanage and they grow up learning to be uh, field agents. Um, so right away, they're sent on to um, an assignment and when the assignment goes wrong, Bennett is left without his other half, Colin. So he must go forward in his school year, trying to figure out who he is without his brother by his side and uh, struggling to figure out if he still wants to be a field agent. So he gets his brother's ex-girlfriend, Darcy, to help train him up a bit more. And they get into a bunch of shenanigans and you get to, yeah, you just get to explore uh, what life is like as a field agent. Wow, that is amazing. So what made you come up with this this wonderful world. And also, when did you start writing? Um, so this wonderful world, I mentioned Maple because I used to train and work at a horse barn. And so while I was mucking out stalls, cleaning stalls, shoveling horse poop at five in the morning, there's no one else there and the horses don't talk back to you. Um, so I started creating stories in my head to entertain myself as I was doing all this work in the dark. Um, and eventually, Bennett came into my head and I'm like, oh, this is interesting. Who is, who is this person? Because usually like most people kind of the stories I created in my head revolved around myself. And then once the story didn't revolve around myself, it was a little, it was a little jolting. So then Bennett came along, Colin came along, Darcy came along and this school was formed. And I thought about this story for months while I was doing my work. And so after three or four months of thinking of it, forming what I kind of realized was a four book series, I realized I need to start writing this down because I had the start and the end of each of these four books. And I'm like, let's figure out what goes in the middle. Um, so I had 
no writing history at all. I never took any creative writing classes in high school or anything. I just kind of decided like, I'm going to write these for me because Bennett came to me. And when I first started writing, I kind of thought, well, if this is, if he's 16 years old, what did 16 year old me like to read? So I kind of narrowed it down. And so I thought, okay, well, let's write this for 16 year old me. And that was kind of the start of it. And it took two years to write. Um, I remember halfway through it, I finally started telling people and they were just shocked. Like they had never heard that I wanted to be a writer at all. Up to that point, they thought I would train horses for most of my life. Um, yeah, and so they were very supportive, which was awesome. Well, that's amazing, right? So as you're about, like going on your first book journey, <laughs> And you're like, I have to write the middle. So how did you do it? Were you like a pantser and just kind of just, when it came to you, you wrote it down? Or did you like kind of plan out the chapters and was like, okay. And then did your characters come and destroy it? Like, yeah. What, what? <laughs> so funny enough, I was in therapy at the time that I was doing this. So I actually brought it to my therapist and she's just like, okay, like I haven't had this before. If this is what you want to do, like start writing it down. And so she actually helped me plot out then what was 20 chapters. Um, I didn't necessarily know what every chapter was gonna be, but I was very confident in what was then chapter five, um, which later became chapter nine and 10. Um, my book went from 20 chapters to 40 chapters. Um, wow. So that kind of, I, I focused on smaller chapters, very easy bite-sized pieces. So people, when they finished reading a chapter, they're like, I can read one more, it's no problem. Um, yeah, so I, it was very interesting. I didn't really know the, I knew where they were heading for the climax, but I didn't know what happened at the, like the climax. So writing to get there was very interesting. And then once I wrote it, it was, I had to go back and do a lot of work to fix the back end of it. Um, yeah, but that was my very first experience writing a book and writing the second one went completely different. <laughs> interesting, very interesting. So as you, you said that you had found this career kind of later than most writers go, oh yeah, I knew when I was seven. And you're like, no, no, I didn't know. So how has your previous career helped you in your writing career? That is a fantastic question. So huge passion for horses. Um, unfortunately in this series, Bennett's not gonna come up with a horse, but I have another series that I'm also working on that has a horse in it. So I'm very excited for that. Um, so that aspect, there's not too much that helped my career, but once I uh, stopped working at a horse barn, I actually started working at, um, a local shop in my area and they sell like cute locally made things like jewelry, soap, that kind of stuff. I absolutely love it. Um, and through that, I was able to get a grasp on social media because social media is so big for small shops. Um, so I got to like learn a bunch of stuff, do research for social media, um, and then also figure out how to approach um, bookstores because we have so many uh, artists coming into the store asking if they could sell their stuff in our store and so through that interactions I've been like able to like take notes so it's kind of not so much writing influence but more um more like the business marketing side I've gotten a lot of help from my other job well I mean that is part of the business right because you don't have a career to not make money <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's really great that you got all that marketing experience so now I'm going to ask you the question <laughs> that is the question what are three pieces of advice that you would tell every new author out there, business side, regular side, whatever you want to say? Okay. First off, business side, if you're hopping on social media, which I highly recommend, um, don't copy what other people are doing. That is so easy to just get lost in, um, in the other traffic. Um, I found when I hopped onto TikTok, uh, book talk was really taking off. And so I found just a lot of people, um, it wasn't so many authors, it was more like people who were uh, book enthusiasts, bookstagrammers, that kind of stuff, book bloggers, sharing, oh, these are books that I recommend. And since I am not that, I figured I can't really do this. Uh, so I kind of knocked that out and realized I have a huge story to tell with my self-publishing journey, with my writing journey. I'm gonna start off my TikToks with, are you writing your first book? 
And that seemed to take off and really captivate people because asking that question right away, um, people were like, wait, I am writing my first book. And then they would stay and watch the video. So I highly recommend finding your own specific niche that sets you apart from other people. Cause so far I haven't come across really anyone who starts their videos off with, are you writing your first book? So I highly recommend whatever social media platform you're on, finding your own thing that sets you apart from everyone else. Um, my other piece of advice, take your time um, and commit to the path that you're on. Um, because yeah, if I would have went a different path, I probably would have went traditional publishing um, be because I was incredibly impatient. I went the self-publishing route because I just wanted to get my book out there. Um, thank goodness I got a wonderful self-publishing team um, that came around me and told me where I needed to slow down and where I needed to step up in other places. So um, one of the things that I had like no clue about is actually hiring an editor and the fact that people actually, before they start um, applying to get an agent, they actually get their book previously edited. And I'm like, they do? Um, so that was really interesting because when I handed my first book in to my editor at the self-publishing company, the first note he gave back to me, please keep in mind, I have no creative writing history. He asked me, are you aware of what commas do? And I'm like, no. And he's like, watch this video. And my work completely changed because I finally figured out how to use a comma. Um, yeah. So figure out what your niche is on social media, slow down and be patient. And my third piece of advice is really listen to your characters. You're not in control of the story. Um, if I was, a bunch of different things would have happened to Bennett, um, but Bennett's in control of his story. Um, he has a completely different attitude than me. He has a different personality. He has different actions he does when he's sad, when he's mad. So it's really getting to know your character and taking the time to step away from your story so that your characters can step in. Wow, these are really great pieces of advice. Like, I really love it. Okay, let's talk a little bit about self-publishing and I promise we're gonna be done. All right, so you said that you had a learning curve when you were doing this self-publishing and yeah. you learned what an editor is. How many, like, how many different editors did you go to? Um, so thank goodness in the self-publishing company, they already had editors within there. So my book got passed to a content editor, which was great. Cause he's just like, when I got my book back, it was so much read on it. And he's just like, this is impossible. Rewrite this chapter. And I'm like, cool, 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 cool. Through my tears. Um, but it was so great. Um, because he was able to tear it apart and help me piece it back together to how Bennett actually wanted his story to be. And then after that, it was handed off to a different editor, a copy editor who goes through for readability, grammar, that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, I was very grateful that um, the self-publishing company, shout out to Friesen Press, um, came equipped with those editors because I would have been so lost without them. Absolutely. And y'all, as much as writers we really really hate to get back that thing full of red it really does help us and then I, I always like to take this opportunity to be like and beta readers help y'all so when you have those people read your book and they're like okay this was cool but all of this didn't make sense listen to them y'all because sometimes I mean you know how your book wants to be but mm -hmm. sometimes it's another thing to have another set of eyes on it so you can get the clarity so everyone knows how you want your book to be yes 100 so, absolutely um so tell everyone where they can check you out on tiktok um where they can buy your book and where's your website okay awesome my website is www.rs12s.com um my instagram tiktok and in or and twitter handle is mm -hmm. at rs12s um and then you can find my book basically wherever you do your book shopping. You can find it at Barnes and Noble. You can find it at Indigo if you're in Canada. Um, you can go to your local bookstore, which I always highly recommend because I love shopping local and ask them to bring it in and they will. Um, yeah. 
Thank you so much for coming on the show today. We really appreciate it. I'll go ahead and wrap this up. Y'all can find out everything your ladies are doing on www.andithoughtladies.com. While you're there, take a minute, go to the middle of the page to see the charities that we probably support. Maybe you can support them also. We thank you in a, maybe you can support them also. Yeah, I said that wrong. <laughs> and you can support them also. We thank you in advance for that. And just remember, y'all, wisdom is all around you if you're open to finding it and accepting it. So peace and love from Jade and the missing Winona. Oh, yeah, y'all. Thanks for listening.